George Lubega Timothy, born back on the 8th of June, 1984, is a Ugandan singer. But you may not know him as George, but by his stage name, Exodus. He made his musical debut in 2004 with his hit single, Ganjaman. Exodus was raised by a single mother who died when he was only 10 years old. He was then taken in until he was 12 years old by his polygamous father. He then joined the streets of Kampala after being rejected by his physically and mentally abusive dad. He then started feeding in dustbins, smoking marijuana, sniffing petrol and even pickpocketing for a living. Now, this was until he visited Pastor Robert Kayanja from the Miracle Center Church, which ended up being the turning point of his life. He then went on to do big hits. even bigger hits plus winning multiple awards now how did he go from being homeless to conquering one of the biggest stages in the world let's find out on up close and personal Someone tell me why life can be so hard To live a day and night, you struggle, fight to live a life Someone tell me why life can be so hard To live a day and night, you struggle, fight to live I was, was a ganja man, a lika man and a beta man Chained up no more ganja man, no beta but a preacher man Ah. <laughs> ah, we're not done, we're not done. You need to continue, you need to continue. I love the energy, Exodus. One more verse. Okay. More verse. Call me a believer, but you know every time say me win ya. Pana bands and a bima, me a cruising up. Oh Lord, he make me bigger. Now let me go down, down to the preacher. Give me the word, not just a teacher. Cafe the word, that's what me need ya. From a long time, that's what me pray ya. Hands up. <laughs> welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So good to have you in studio. I'm happy to be here with you. That's Amina. a lot of energy. Uh, yes, Amina. I'm an energetic performer. I love yeah. it like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really good. And it just sounds just like it does in the song. <laughs> See, a lot of artists, what happens is when they perform live and when, you know how the song sounds is very different. Uh, the difference is, uh, I think, what, what, what has helped me as an artist, growing up in church mm. is a big blessing. Mm. Uh, when you look at artists that are, you, you know, really, really great, yeah. they have a church background with mm. them. Talk True. about Asha. Talk about Whitney Houston, the late Whitney mm. Houston. Mm. Talk about uh, Amani mm. from Kenya. Talk about many artists. Yeah. So church grooms you because with we, we, we church every single week you are singing to live music. Yeah. You're given a song, you rehearse it, yeah. and then you sing live on a yeah. Sunday. So that that is a big blessing because it helps you grow vocally. Mm. It helps you. you it, it helps you mature musically. Mm. I've been. I sang in church before I came out as a solo artist. Seven years, you know, and that that's a blessing. 
It is. Yeah. And we have had a lot of people who've come and performed live, and the energy has never been like that. <laughs> Plus, they never do it a cappella as well, which is it's quite good. Time for us now to get up close and personal with Exodus, in case you just joined us. Good morning. This is K24 Alpha Jury. The hashtag to use is K24 Alpha Jury. We are on Twitter. We're on SMS. That is 2001. We are on Facebook. Plus, you can also call us live in studio. The number is at the bottom of your screen. Now, it didn't always, you didn't always look like this. First of all, the, when I just met you, I told you, you look Congolese and you laugh. You <laughs> are crazy. I'm Why? not Congolese. <laughs> <laughs> you look it though. Uh, okay, yeah, many people actually, a couple of people have told me that I look Congolese. I yeah. think it's a, it's, it's a blessing. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, African music was almost every beat, every thing is founded from Congo. We emulate the Congolese from way back. Yeah. You know, so it's a, it's a blessing. But yeah. I'm not Congolese though. I wish <laughs> I was. <laughs> no, being Ugandan is just fine. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Um, and let's start it from, you know, the beginning because you were not always, you know, looking this Congolese, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes. So where did it all start? Where were you born? Which side of Uganda? Um, I was born in a slum called Kisenyi, mm -hmm. uh, relative to Kibera here. But raised by a single mom, mm -hmm. you know, when I came to my senses, all I knew was my mom. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, my mom passed away when I was 10 years with mm. HIV, AIDS. And then I was sent to live with my father, you know, but my father was a polygamist. He was a polygamy, you know, he had quite a number of women. Uh, and uh, in the African culture, we know very well if a child is not your biological child, in most cases, they are a disgrace or a bastard. You know, so uh, I suffered, you know, in the hands of a number of stepmothers of mine in my father's house. Mm. Uh, it got to a point, I, I lived with my father for only two years, and the mistreatment was too much, too mm. much. I couldn't take it. Yeah. You know, I, I remember one morning, I don't even remember what I did, but my father was told, I don't know. Mm. You know, at about 5.30 a.m. in the morning, my father beat me so bad for about one and a half hours. Just straight, one and a half hours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We Beating had you with, <coughs> what, with like his hands or like with everything and anything? He, with his belt. Mm. You know, pulled out his belt and whipped me for over one and a half hours. And I'm wondering why I'm being beaten. I didn't even know why. You know, and then... Uh, Is that how you were woken up? No, 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 no. He okay. woke me up and okay. he told me, I was told you didn't do this, that and that. Why? You know, why are you a bad child? Why are you this and that? But... I didn't do anything, and mm. he started beating me just like that, you know. And uh, the worst incident was we had a glass lamp in the house, yeah. you know. He got it and smashed it across my head. Oh my I goodness. was wearing a white T-shirt. It all turned red, you know, blood oh. dripping all over. Mm. At that moment was when I was like, you know, I, I can't stay in this house any longer. Mm. My father was not a bad man, but mm. because of the stepmothers, the things he was being pushed, the, the, mm. the words and stuff, that were pushed into his mind, you know, mm. made him a bad man. Yeah. And uh, that, la that last moment, I thought to myself, and I'm, I'm like, my mom is dead. Mm -hmm. I am with a father, but it looks like I don't have nobody left in this world. Mm. You know, I might as well die and nobody cares. Mm. You know, the first thought that came to my head was to commit suicide. We had a small radio in the house. I uh, got the batteries out of the radio to two dry cells, yeah. you know, smashed them, and I mixed the substance with water, and I drank it. You oh know, I God. waited for that moment where I was going to die, but it didn't happen, you know. Uh, today I know... Wait, what happened? Did you go to hospital? No, I didn't. Nothing was, happened at all? I was 12 years. So you were fine? Uh, I waited for that moment when I was going to die, and it didn't happen, you know. Today I know, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian, and I know today that God uh, kept me because of the plan and the purpose he had for my life, mm. you know, because even after that incident, yeah. I, I sneaked into his bedroom. He was drunk, asleep. You know, I picked his watch, picked the little batteries out of the watch, and I swallowed them. But Again. nothing happened. Yeah, nothing happened, you know. Uh, at that moment, I just thought of, you know, let me just leave home mm. and run and wander in yeah. the street. So I got back to Kampala where I, w I lived with my mom mm. and started wandering on the streets. I mm. grew up as a street kid from 12 years until 2002. I lived what? for about seven years of my life on the streets. I've been on every kind of drug, yeah. every kind of alcohol, yeah. done crazy stuff. Yeah. You know, we used to beat up people to get 
something to eat. Yeah. If we didn't, then we would eat from the garbage cans mm. around town. And that's been my life, basically. And, you know, they, there's a, we, we were doing an, um, a street family initiative. Oh, yeah. And one of the young boys, he was around 13. He said he didn't know his age. Oh, yeah. Uh, but he, he thinks he's around 13. Oh, yeah. And he said that the one thing that really, really makes him feel so bad, and maybe that's why a lot of people turn to crime, is that people already think you're a criminal. And he says, I've never been stolen from anyone, but people already, because I'm a street child, look at me and then they think... Yeah, but because of, because of the way you look, yeah. you know. Did that ever happen to you? Yeah. Where people run away from you and... A lot of times, mm. you know, but mine was, was we, we actually, we were <laughs> street kids. Yeah. Because if you did not steal, then you'd go hungry, mm. you know. So, uh, been mobbed a couple of times, mm. you know, you steal from here, and then they get you and beat you up, you know. Uh, most of my friends have been beaten to death you know because of money here and there you know a lot of craziest things happened on the street yeah. you know my last day on the street my last night on the street it was about 5 a.m in the morning slept with my friends that we used to roam around with on the streets and in the morning we woke up to gunshots mm. you know and uh certain gang had raided and five of the boys were shot dead i woke up in a pool of blood and as i was taking off bullets flying behind my back you know that was my last day on the street you know, one of the bigger boys told me, they used to call me Abe. He mm. said, Abe, you can't live on these streets young as you are anymore. I know of a church, I know of a pastor. You know, mm. they say he helps young people. Mm. Probably if you go to that church, you know, he can help you. So even what took me to church was not to get saved or find Christ. I was looking for shelter. To run away from the police. To run away from the gangs, yes. to run away from the crazy life on the mm. street. Otherwise, I would have been dead. Mm. Yeah. So then you go to the church and you meet Pastor Robert, is Pastor it? Robert Kayanja, yeah. And did you think he was going to help you or you just went there to try it out? You had nothing to lose at that time, right? To be honest, I wasn't even thinking. All I needed was a place that is mm. not the streets anymore. Mm. Mm. And if I could get shelter in that place, mm. regardless of how I was treated, I yes. would be okay. Mm. You know, and even when I went to the church, I did not meet him immediately mm. because I remember the first Sunday I went to a uh, miracle center there was another pastor preaching his name uh, is Pastor Makoko mm -hmm. he was preaching and uh, what really touched my heart is as I entered the doors of the church the welcome the love you know I'd not seen that in probably 10 years of my life yeah. you know it, it felt different you know, and I entered church, the preaching, how they talked about how God loves us, how it doesn't matter where you have come from, mm. how he can change your life. That really, really touched my heart. Uh, but, but, but the highlight of it, there was this choir, mm -hmm. you know, they were singing, and I looked at the choir, and uh, somebody that was seated next to me, I asked them where the choir lives, and they told me they had shelter. They had a house which the pastor had rented for them. Mm -hmm. You know, some kids had come from broken homes, yes. and they, they, they used to stay in, 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 in that home and uh, from the street. So I had to lie to the choir leader that I was a singer, mm. yet I wasn't, mm. you know, and, and, and she let me in the choir. But two weeks down the road, she realized I'm not a singer. But I used to do gymnastics on the street. So two Sundays, when they came to sing, I used to come in front and do backflips, somersaults, and all that kind of stuff. So the cr crowd went crazy. So she let me be in the choir. Mm. Trying to just find your way to fit in. Exactly. Were you, did you know you were talented before? No. So, no. A quick question. Yeah. Do street children, for lack of a better uh, term, do they know when they would want to leave? Do they ever want to leave? Are there some who are so okay just being uh, living on the streets? Yeah, there are some that are okay living mm. on the streets. Uh, coming from uh, some, act actually, we had a few kids who, have, who, are just, who are just stubborn boys. Mm. You know, they left home and just wanted this life. Yeah. You know, and there is us who left home because it was too much, you couldn't take it, mm. you understand. So there was all different kinds of people, yeah. you know, the ones that have nothing left but mm -hmm. the streets, yeah. the ones that just wanted the peer, the mm. hype, the life yeah. Yeah. of the street, you know, smoking marijuana, yeah. you know, trying to be bad, you know, yeah. trying to act bad. Some to came from good families. Yeah, yeah. To really, like they could just go home anytime they wanted. Yeah, yeah. To just be rebellious. Yeah. Did you fall sick when you just went to the streets the first time? 
getting accustomed to everything, eating in trash cans, you are not used to that. Drugs, alcohol, you are not used to that. I don't remember uh -huh. falling sick okay. immediately on the street, but it was one time, uh, because we used to sleep in the cold, mm. you know, when it rains, it rains on you. It, it, it got to a point it got to a point where, you, you, you know, it was, it was too much. One time I got malaria, you know. I, sometimes in the day, you know, it's too hot, but you're feeling too cold mm. from the inside, you know. And they took me to this doctor, and then they said that uh, the cold had entered my bones. I didn't know what that meant, you know, but they gave me treatment. Mm -hmm. and then, but that was after a few weeks, then the incident happened, then I had to leave the streets. Mm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And even as now you went to church, oh, yeah. did you know what you would want to do or you thought somehow you'll just find it on your way? To be honest, I went to church with no ambition, mm -hmm. no uh, prospects. Yeah. I didn't, I just, I just wanted a place to comfortably stay, mm. but off the streets, mm. you know. And it took about two months while I was in the choir you know I used to go back the house do my splits and then come on a Sunday morning <laughs> okay. and do back and did the pastor know this he did not know okay even the choir leader did not know yeah. the day she found out she actually wanted to kick me out of the home yeah you know but then I used to somersault and make the crowd crazy so they they couldn't kick me out because yeah. of that but I remember one morning we were praying because we had morning prayer so as we were praying in the morning, they asked uh, of people who had never been water baptized. Yeah. And I was one of those, mm. you know. And I remember as we were being taken to be water baptized this Saturday, you know, as I was being immersed in the water, I clearly heard a voice. And yeah. a voice said, this day, huh. it is over. Uh. It is over. Well, you heard a voice. Okay. Yeah, that was 2004. Yeah. The voice clearly said it is over. I didn't know what it meant by then. But then when we went back home, something had come on me. Mm. I started to desire to know God. Mm -hmm. I started to desire just to worship, just to love on God. And I remember one Sunday we were in church and then just tears were running down my eyes. I told God, you know, I have nothing to offer the world. Mm. If you can use me, please do. But mm. if you can't use me, just take me away. Mm. I have nothing to offer to this world, mm. you know. Then God just gripped my heart. I started worshiping. Mm -hmm. But even in the choir, they never believed I could sing. I never believed I would sing myself. Because you never was, sang before, Exactly, right? you know. Uh -huh. But then bit by bit, it took about six months. And then I started singing. From nowhere, From just one nowhere, day. yeah. And then uh, there was this Sunday. Uh, they introduced a song. And then one of the leaders in the choir was like, that is George's voice. I think he should do that song. But then the you mean Exodus? See, we don't know George. So you have to say Exodus. They used to call me George <laughs> then. Uh, but then the choir, even the choir leader never believed in yeah. me, actually. I was like a black sheep among uh, everybody. You know? And she's like, no, 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 he cannot. He cannot because we have voices. Uh, to a point, I used to make my uniform. And if somebody was leading, I had to give my uniform because I can't sing. Mm. That hurt me so bad. Mm. But then this morning, they argued because the other leader had just come back from South Africa yeah. and she had some money so they could listen to her. And she said, no, that is George's voice. He's supposed to do that song. You know, they gave me the song we rehearsed on a Saturday. It was very perfect. And everybody wondered, actually, he has yeah. a voice. He has yeah. something in him. And then come Sunday, Pastor Robert was not around, but he came back that Sunday. So holding the mic, seeing him seated there, I just lost it. Yeah. They started playing, and then I, when I started, the, the words just disappeared. Yeah, you went blank. You know? yeah. yeah. And uh, that I remember after service that Sunday, my choir leader abused me so badly. Yeah. She even said, you will never hold my microphone again. Yeah. A Chinese microphone. Yeah. At that moment, it had become <laughs> hers. <laughs> you know? okay. She said, you will never hold my microphone again. Yeah. But I remember the second time I stood to sing. It was yeah. after like a month and a half. Yeah. I did a worship song by Kirk Franklin. Yes. And as I stood, I was singing. I closed my eyes. I just disappeared away. Yeah. And as I was worshiping, tears running. I didn't even know what was happening. Do you know the name of the song? I, uh, I, I can't recall it okay. really right now. Yeah. I can't recall it pretty. But when I was singing this song, I opened my eyes. 
and the whole congregation was up on their feet. Oh, wow. Most of the people were in tears, including oh, wow. my pastor. Oh, wow. And then I opened my eyes. I was wearing a jacket, was very, very big, you know. It's, yeah. This was about there. Yes, it it yeah. was a big jacket, you know, but it was filled with money. Oh, people gave you money? People gave me money. And you couldn't feel it because you were Yeah, there. because I was away. I, was, yeah. I just disappeared in worship. Yeah. When I opened my eyes, everybody's on their feet. The whole church is in tears, yeah. including my pastor. Yeah. You know, after that service, that, when, that is when Pastor Robert called me to his office. Uh -huh. And he told me, son, God has called you to give hope to the hopeless. Yes. God has called you for ministry. Never let nobody ever tell you you cannot do it. Never let nobody put you down. Yes. Hold that button and mm. run with it. From that moment, he actually took it on himself. He says, George has to sing in church every Sunday. Uh, every yeah. Sunday. Right. So that helped me grow. So from that moment, I was singing, singing, singing for seven years down the road. Until 2008, yeah. when uh, one morning I just had a voice because I was in church for seven years. Mm -hmm. On the streets, I used to steal money and buy whatever I wanted. Yeah. But in church, seven years, yeah. things went like that. Yes. You know, it got to a point where I had one pair of shoes and it had holes under. I couldn't even afford underwear. So I asked God, why do I leave the streets where I could get something and I'm in church you know, and things are just going south, you know. And then God spoke to me and he said, son, you cannot build an empire on another man's empire. Mm. You see, when I came to church, I looked at the pastor mm -hmm. as my source, mm. as my everything, okay. you know. But then God told me, you cannot build your empire on another man's empire. Seek me for me to make you, you. Mm. It was hard, but I remember very well uh, 2008, February, mm. is when I had a voice, God speak to me and say, son, I want you to do 40 days on water, mm. fasting. On water only? No food, yes. nothing? No food, no nothing. Uh -huh. And I remember very well, two weeks down the road, uh -huh. the people that knew my story yeah. actually thought the HIV that took my mom had come for me. Mm, wow. You know, when, 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 when you're seeking God, it's, it's in private. But mm -hmm. when God blesses you, it is so public that even the people that hated you will say, we prayed for you. Yes. Oh, that's true. And yeah. we believed in you from the beginning. Exactly. And in fact, when we here in Kenya started believing in you and started believing in your music, oh, yeah. one of the biggest songs that cut across every single place was a song that you did with Alemba. I know. Called Walking. I am Now walking. that was one massive, massive tune. Let's play right now. <laughs> I could tell you people, oh, it's really demon. Don't sit around till it's taken. Oh, I lemma, yeah. in heaven a member said it. <laughs> I'll make it someday, and I'm never gonna fret. I know I'll make it anywhere. Hey, Walking. <laughs> no, oh. that was that was a big tune. That, that was a massive tune. That was uh, like my second big song. Yeah. 
My first big song is actually after the 40 days of fasting. Mm. I simply heard like four words uh -huh. in my spirit from God. And it said, I once was a ganja, ganja man, man, a liquor man, a bitter man. I am changed. I'm no more ganja man, but a preacher man. Yes. So I hooked up with a friend of mine that had a very small studio yeah. back home. Yes. And uh, we recorded the song. Yeah. And I, did, I don't even know how this song got out of studio, mm. but the song went viral, viral all over East Africa. Yes. Until it was played on MTV. Yeah. On uh, Af East Africa's top 10. Yeah. A gospel song. Yeah. That really proved to me that God is no respecter of persons. Yes. If you desire it, yes. he would give it to you. Now, sadly, we're out of time because, yeah. can you imagine, we've just I know. talked for so long. <laughs> but what are you doing now to help this, you know, the people on the streets? Has your father come back to talk to you again? Unfortunately, yeah. I mm. actually have been taking care of my father for like five years mm. because when I met him, he was in a very, very bad situation. Did he look for you or you looked for him? I looked for him okay. because somebody told me your father yeah. is dying. He okay. had cancer, diabetes, he had a heart problem. He had so many complications. Mm. I hated my father mm. until I got to know his heart. Because when I got him, he was in a very critical situation. Got him, took him to hospital, after hospital. Spent a lot of money for over five years. Brought him to my house. That is when I actually got to know he was so mistreated by his grandparents. Because my father's dad, my grandfather is Italian. And uh, by then, when they gave birth to him, to my father, it was like a disgrace for a woman to marry out of their Community. Community or culture, yeah. something like that. So my, fa my grandfather actually wanted to take my father away to Italy because when they came, they used to work on the roads. Mm. He was a director with Starling. Mm. Oh, he's full know. Italian? Yes. Mom and dad? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm. My, my father? Mm. No, my father, his dad is Italian. Oh, his dad. The okay. mom is a Ugandan. Ah, okay. So his dad wanted to go with his son. Yes. You know, because they were pushing him away. Yes. You know? And uh, he couldn't, so yeah. he, he actually fled for his life to mm. live. So my father was like a black sheep as well. Mm. You, I remember when we talked, he told me, son, you do not know, but I used to be tied on a tree head mm. down, and that is how I used to be beat. Oh, my goodness. So that followed him. Unfortunately, he did not change that. Oh, he didn't know how to raise Exactly. Now. Okay. You know, so that, that is the reason why he treated us the way he did. Oh. He, he didn't know how to he didn't know raise any children. Yeah. You know, so I loved my dad so much, but God gave him to me for only one and a half years mm. after he got well. Okay. And unfortunately, last year he passed away. Yeah, but my father loved my children like they were his own. How many kids do you have? I have two boys. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> two lovely boys. Are you married? I am married. How many years now? Uh, four, four years now. Ah, that's you're blessed. Yes. I am. Yeah, I they're saying you're good. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, um, right before you introduce your new song, which we have, you're going to play it in a bit. Oh, yeah. How do you get to inspire young, you know, young men who are lost? They haven't yet found their purpose. They don't mm -hmm. believe they even have a purpose, just like you um, back then. What Actually, you what you don't know is back home, I work with uh, one of the biggest charity organizations in the country. Mm. Uh, six years ago, we used to take care of over uh, 12,000 orphaned children. Mm. It's an organization called the Irene Gleason Foundation. Okay. If you Google it, you, you can see what we do. You know, but most of the kids are grown now. Some are, are in university, others are in vocationals. But right now, we have over 4,600 on set, mm. orphan children, and uh, some of them are war, you know, are war child soldiers. You know, and uh, the, the person that really, really changed my life, she got me from church, took me in as her own son. She came from Australia, a lady came from Australia, left her wealth and property and everything and came to Uganda, the north of Uganda when it had war uh, from the 90s till 2006 and she rescued child soldiers, mm. you know, and then she took me among those kids and children. She, she's the one who told me, son, God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Did you just say took you among those kids? Yeah. You were a child soldier? No, 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 I wasn't a child soldier. Okay. She used to take care of right. child soldiers, oh, the ones but who she took been, me in. Yes, because but, it is prevalent. In yeah, but she took Uganda. me in as her special son, mm. not as another orphan. Mm. God works in mysterious ways. He Unfortunately, does. we lost her in 2013. Mm. We just come back from uh, the U.S. We was on the biggest 
Christian television station in America uh, where I told my story and we raised over $500,000 mm. to come back home and build a women's and children hospital. Mm. You know, because you know very well back home, uh, 16 women die every single day. Uh, because of birth related complications mm. so she had this vision of building a hospital in the rural to yes. help children mm. and women unfortunately mm. she could not see it accomplished mm. we just left uh, the US so she went back to Australia and we came back to Africa and oh. three months down the road she had passed but the hospital is up and running okay. and helping That's people there yeah so yeah. I help communities I go to different charities back yeah. home yeah. you know help the needy here yeah. and there because yeah. I was helped by people mm. who are not my family who so don't even know me yeah. all right so um, there you go believe in yourself Exodus um, our guest today on up close and personal we're about to check out what's going on online what is hot what is not what's happening are there any entertainment news girl Christine is going to be giving us the tea. But before that, though, you need to introduce your brand new single, so you need to look at that camera. Which camera? Is that, well, that one, written three. What can we tell you, people? I did this song for everybody that feels down in life. You feel like you cannot move forward, you know, regardless of what you go through. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And uh, me, I chose to be happy about everything. When I'm down, when I'm up, happiness, everybody needs it. Who doesn't want to be happy? And the song is called Happy, Bless You, Let's Watch It.